AM weather is made possible by grants from the Federal Aviation Administration, the Aircraft Owners and Pilots Association, the AOPA Air Safety Foundation, Avemco, direct writers of aircraft and watercraft insurance, Phillips 66, providing products and services to pilots at 800 FBOs, ESD Weather Systems, and the Gorman Rupp Company, pumps for construction, agriculture, and industry. Monday morning, everyone. Welcome to AM Weather. I'm Carl Weiss. Yeah, good morning. I'm Wayne Winston. Well, the main weather maker has been out in the western part of the country over the weekend. We've also had some uh, very spring-like thunderstorms, typical of the time of the year in the southern plains. Let's look at our satellite motion during the past 24 hours, see what's been happening. First, the overall view that begins at 6 a.m. yesterday morning, eastern time. As we said, the main upper level low has been over the western part of the country. It's been triggering both rain and snow up in the mountains. Then we had a secondary disturbance out ahead of it moving across Texas and northeastward. And uh, this triggered quite a bit of uh, thunderstorm activity during the past 24 hours. Now, uh, a lot of warm air out across the country. Yesterday afternoon, there were record high temperatures at Dodge City in Goodland, Kansas. Tumwa in Sioux City, Iowa, also Kansas City, Missouri, and Sioux Falls, South Dakota set record high temperatures for the day. Now we're going to concentrate over the south central part of the country beginning at 8 a.m. yesterday morning, central time. Look at the development of the thunderstorms and see how they've been moving off in a northeastward direction. There were uh, some small size hail uh, report across many areas of Texas, uh, some of that up to golf ball size hail around 4 p.m. yesterday afternoon, some inch and a half hail reported south of the Longview area. Here and there, there were some heavy rains down around the Houston area during the afternoon hours, about one and a third inches of rain there, and up around Fort Sill, Oklahoma in the evening hours, uh, better than an inch of rain there. And as we said, this uh, area has been very warm. Russell, Kansas yesterday afternoon, getting up to 90 degrees. Now we'll turn our attention out to the western part of the country. And as we said, this has been the main storm system moving slowly eastward into the Intermountain region now. There were some heavy rains at times across Arizona yesterday with flash flood watches out early in the day. In fact, uh, Phoenix set a record uh, rainfall uh, for the uh, 26th of March, almost one and a quarter inches of rain yesterday. During the afternoon hours, Tucson picked up about three quarters of an inch of rain. Also, there was snow in the higher elevations up around Flagstaff, six to nine inches, five to seven inches in some of the mountain areas of uh, Utah up in the ski resort areas, more rain up in Idaho, Mallard and uh, Twin Falls between a quarter and a third of an inch of rain yesterday. Next, we'll be looking at the radar during the past eight hours and see the eastward progress of these showers and thunderstorms primarily across Oklahoma and uh, Arkansas this morning. They're reporting some thunder showers around Little Rock with tops to 32,000 feet. Those thunder showers moving off in the uh, north northeasterly direction around uh, 30 miles per hour. And within the past hour or so, some new thunderstorms starting to develop out in the northwest part of Texas. We also have some showers and thunder showers over Florida this morning, down around Vero Beach. They're reporting some showers. And then as we head into the northwest, some light rain being reported around uh, Spokane, Seattle, Olympia, and south or through Portland, Salem, and Medford. Carl? Things are starting to look like spring across the United States. Let's take a look at our Monday morning national map. And one sure sign of spring is heavy showers and thunderstorms, and that's what's happening over the southern half of the plains. Some of these storms have dumped more than an inch of rain and hail the size of golf balls through Oklahoma and Texas. Now, as this trough or dry line moves slowly eastward during the day, it will help to trigger more severe thunderstorms over this same area. Strong southerly winds are also helping to fuel some of these storms. Winds over Kansas have gusted to more than 50 miles per hour, raising dust and lowering visibilities. North of this front, where the temperatures have cooled off, dense fog is formed over the northern plains. Visibilities are down to zero at Brainerd and a sixteenth of a mile at Huron. Temperatures over the plains range from the low 30s in the far north to the 70s across much of central and southern Texas. In the east, with high pressure off the eastern seaboard, southerly winds also bringing the warm air eastward. Thick fog is also formed across northeastern Florida. Visibilities are down to one sixteenth of a mile at Jacksonville. Eastern temperatures at daybreak are mostly in the 20s and 30s over the New England states. 40s and 50s extend from Pennsylvania southward through the Carolinas. 
A new front is bringing more stormy weather into the northwest where rain is falling along the northwest coast this morning. And partly to mostly cloudy skies are found over California and into the southwest. A little bit of light rain falling over the Rockies and a few showers over southern Arizona. Temperatures across the west are mild as well with 30s and 40s found from the Rockies and northwest through the interior with 50s found over central and southern California. Temperature extremes at 6 a.m. Eastern Time are found at Flagstaff, Arizona at 21 and down at McAllen, Texas at 75. High temperatures expected a little later on on this Monday. Look at this area of 70s and 80s from the Plain States of the Great Lakes and into the east and southeast. 80s as far north as Morgantown, West Virginia. 50s and 60s through the northeastern part of the nation. 40s over the extreme northern plains. 40s and 50s generally through the plateau and Rockies and 60s and 70s into the southwest. Overnight low temperatures will dip into the 40s over the New England states, even a few 30s over northern sections. But once again, much of the eastern plain states will have lows in the 50s and 60s, 70s and 80s for much of Florida, 70s near Brownsville, Texas, 20s and 30s generally through the northern plains and Rockies with 50s for much of the California coastline. Now looking at our first forecast map for this Monday evening, once again, we expect more showers and thunderstorms to form over the southern plain states. Some of them could be locally severe, and a few widely scattered storms as far north as western lower Michigan. The cool front will be pushing slowly into the northern plain states, bringing some somewhat cooler temperatures there. Rain and rain showers from the northern high plains back into the northwest, with a little bit of snow expected in the Washington Cascades, and rain and rain showers with the upper level low over far west Texas and southern New Mexico. Then our map for Tuesday morning will once again find low pressure over northwestern Wisconsin, bringing a good chance of rain and rain showers to the western Great Lakes. Widely scattered showers and thunderstorms southward from the lakes into the plains of Texas. They'll become more numerous in the Rio Grande Valley. We'll have snow falling for the Washington and Oregon Cascades, rain into the Snake River Valley, and rain and rain showers along the northwest coast. And finally, our map for Wednesday morning will have that whole funnel system moving slowly eastward through the Great Lakes into the Ohio Valley, bringing with it rain and rain showers over New England, mixing with a few thunderstorms through the Ohio Valley and down to the Gulf Coast. Funnel system now moving out of the Rockies into the High Plains, taking with it rain, rain showers, some snow in the northern Rockies and through the Cascades, and there may even be some snow in the higher mountains of northern California. Wayne? Most of the precipitation during the immediate future will be along the northwest coast and from the southern plains into parts of the Midwest. We'll be taking a closer look at that and then the five-day precipitation forecast. But first, between now and this time tomorrow morning, along the northwest coast, uh, many areas could get anywhere from a quarter to a half inch of rain and locally in northwest uh, Oregon, perhaps uh, up to an inch. Then showers and thunderstorms from Texas northeast across Iowa and Illinois. Many areas could pick up close to a half inch of rain. Of course, in this type of precipitation, uh, the amounts are very spotty, but uh, some areas of Kansas and Oklahoma still very dry. They need that rainfall. Now, during the upcoming five days, uh, rainfall will be above normal in a wide area from New England to the uh, upper Midwest and southward into the Gulf region, as well as across the Northwest. In fact, uh, only one area where it will generally be below normal, that in the Southwest. Carl? Well, pilots, early on this Monday morning, we have most of the airline flights running on time, and springtime hazards include pockets of thick fog as well as thunderstorms, and that's what we expect during the upcoming 24 hours. Taking a look, first of all, at our current flying weather map, we have fog along the southeast and Gulf Coastal states, two thunderstorms mixing in as we move through Texas and into parts of Kansas, fog from the Great Lakes back into the northern plains, and low clouds and rain generally from the Rockies into the northwest. Icing of note is found in the west early on this Monday through the central and southern Rockies. We expect some occasional moderate rime or mixed icing from the freezing level to around 20,000 feet. And for the Cascades in northwest California, there'll be more occasional moderate rime or mixed icing. And this is during the morning hours from the freezing level to around 15,000 feet. No shortage of turbulence, either moderate to 10,000 feet from the Great Lakes down through Texas with strong southerly winds. A few thunderstorms and showers moderate to 40,000 feet over the plains. Jet stream wind shear over the plateau from 25,000 to 40,000 feet. And strong low-level turbulence in the northwest. It'll be moderate to 15,000 feet. Then through the evening hours, we'll have some clouds and showers along the frontal system from James Bay into the Plain States and through the northern Rockies. Locally severe thunderstorms south and through the Plain States, haze along the southeast coast, and more rain expected in the northwest. Looking at turbulence, pretty much the same picture, the exception being moderate to locally severe turbulence to 45,000 feet from Oklahoma southward with some of those heavy thunderstorms. Coming up next, we have winds aloft, and Wayne has them starting at 2,000 feet above ground level. 
And here we find a broad southerly wind flow, not only keeping things warm from the plains on eastward, but bringing a lot of moisture northward, which will be triggering those showers and storms. Now the stronger low-level winds found in the shaded area from Oklahoma northward into the upper Midwest, as well as in the Pacific Northwest with the approach of that next Pacific front. Now up at 10,000 feet, we have one area of 25 to 50 knot winds running along the west coast from British Columbia southward and a second band from eastern uh, parts of Texas and Louisiana, northeastward across the lakes. When you go up to 18,000 feet there, we see the evidence of that uh, upper-level storm system in the western part of the country over the uh, Four Corners area. Uh, the strongest winds along the Pacific coast between 50 and 100 knots. Finally, at 34,000 feet, lighter winds in the east, stronger as we head westward. There's the jet from the Oregon coast diving straight southward into northwest Mexico and in the vicinity of the jet. That's where we find the stronger winds between uh, 100 and 150 knots. Now it's time for Weather Watch. Here again is Carl. Just one item in the east, and that's found in Florida, where we have a dense fog advisory that has been issued for the northeastern part of the state, including the Jacksonville area, and this advisory is through the early morning hours. Moving into the plains for the next 24 hours, there is a moderate risk of severe thunderstorms from extreme southern Oklahoma southward through much of Texas. Extending northward into southern Kansas and eastward into western parts of Louisiana, the risk of severe thunderstorms is slight. The entire Texas Gulf Coast is under small craft advisories for southeasterly winds of 20 to 25 knots and seas running 5 to 8 feet. Lake wind advisories extend northward from southern Texas, northward through northwestern Arkansas into most of Kansas. Southerly winds will gust to over 30 miles per hour. Farther north in the Plain States, we have a morning dense fog advisory posted for eastern parts of north and south Dakota. Heading into the far west, the Wiser River at Wiser in western Idaho is under a flood warning. Small craft advisories are flying along the entire Pacific coastline from Point Conception, California, northward to Cape Flattery, Washington. North of Point Arena, winds will be southerly 20 to 30 knots, which swells to 15 feet. Farther south, hazardous seas to 10 feet will cause some of the problems. Small craft advisories also cover all of Southern California's outer coastal waters for ocean swells to 10 feet, and small craft advisories also extend through the Strait of Juan de Fuca and inland waters of western Washington. These are for west and southwesterly winds running anywhere from 15 to 25 knots. Now, if you are in a weather-sensitive area, we urge you to tune into your local NOAA Weather Radio channel. They'll broadcast continuous weather information for you. That's all the time we have for you on this Monday morning. We hope you have just a great day. Make sure you come back and see us again right here, bright and early on Tuesday morning. is made possible by grants from the Federal Aviation Administration, the Aircraft Owners and Pilots Association, the AOPA Air Safety Foundation, Avemco, direct writers of aircraft and watercraft insurance, Phillips 66, providing products and services to pilots at 800 FBOs, ESD Weather Systems, and the Gorman Rupp Company, pumps for construction, agriculture, and industry. Arts programming on KET is made possible in part by contributions to the KET Fund for Excellence. Citizens Fidelity Foundation is a founder of the Fund for Excellence. KET thanks Citizens Fidelity Foundation for helping to make possible arts programming from the Kentucky Center for the Arts.